My name is Juki Davy, but you can just call me Juki. I am so excited to be sharing with you one of my favorite books. I hope you like it too. The story I'll be reading for you today is called Ruffarella. It's one of my favorite books from when I was younger, so I hope you enjoy it just as much as I did. Ruffarella by Vanessa Gill Brown and Manly Stanley. Diamante loved stories, and her most favorite story was Cinderella. She likes to imagine that she was the fairy godmother, the one who made things happen. She desperately wanted to turn something into something. But what? One day, her eyes rested on Ruff, her dog. Aha! She would turn her dog into, into a human, into a Ruffarella. How about it, Ruff? She exclaimed. Want to be a girl? Ruff didn't really like being a human much, but Diamante could be very convincing. And soon, Ruff was sure it was all trifle and television in the human world. But how would it happen? She didn't even have a magic wand. I don't need one, said Diamante confidently. I will teach you how to be human. It isn't difficult. I do it all the time without even thinking. Here's Diamante brushing her hair. It looks like she's going to try to teach Ruffarella how to brush her hair. Or her ears, I guess you would say. So, the lesson begins. First, Diamante dressed Ruff in human clothes did her hair in a human style, and applied some makeup. There, she squealed. At least you look like a real girl now. And you shall be called Ruffarella. Next, Ruffarella learned how to eat with a knife and fork, drink from a cup, and how to cough and sneeze politely. Diamante also tried to explain about not taking all the chocolate cookies for yourself. But Ruffarella found this aspect of being human very difficult to swallow, unlike the chocolate cookies. Look at it her way. Finally allowed to eat human treats and she's supposed to let others choose first? Sausages, in particular, would have posed a problem. Ruffarella loved those more than anything. Diamante decided to show her off at a friend's birthday party. You shall go to the ball, Ruffarella. Penny's party anyway. But you mustn't let anyone know you're really a dog. Ruffarella was nervous. But she had no need to be. She danced, played games, drank soda, ate cake, and all without spilling a drop or a crumb. She even sang happy birthday to Penny. Oh look, here she is playing pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> oh, she's drinking soda down here. She's eating cake down here. To everyone's delight, she had the most beautiful, deep voice anyone at the party has ever heard. What a wonderful voice this girl has. She should be on television. After that, she was invited to sing at other people's parties, then in theaters where crowds came to hear the amazingly sweet, low voice of little Ruffarella. And eventually, she did sing on TV. Diamante always went with her, but she couldn't help feeling a bit left out. There was no time for playing soccer or rolling around on the carpet like they used to. Still, it was fun being Ruffarella's assistant. One day, among the usual heap of mail over Ruffarella, a very special invitation came. Diamante opened it. It's from the Queen! She saw you on television and wants you as a guest 
to attend a ball at the palace. You really are Ruffarella. Spurnberg, said Ruffarella. So Diamante replied to the queen, accepting her kind invitation, and they both set about getting new dresses and hairdos. Well, if they are going to get ready for the ball, maybe I should get ready for the ball. Let me use my handy little wand here. And... Oh, well, I think my handy dandy wand came in handy dandy. What do you think? Do I look all pretty for the ball? Okay, let's continue with our story. The ball was wonderful. Everything was bright and sparkling and beautiful. Everyone wanted to dance with Ruffarella and compliment her on her charming and unusual singing voice. Then they were escorted into the dining room. Let's turn the pages with my gloves. Ruffarella was worried. Diamante's place was miles away. She'd never been totally on her own before, and she was hungry. And the prince next to her was just a tiny bit stupid and boring. And the dress was just a little bit too tight. She wondered what was for dinner. She watched as the queen was served. It was sausages. Sausages! Orfarella took one look and leapt onto the table, bounding toward the queen. Orfarella landed on the queen's plate and began wolfing the delicious, juicy sausages. Good heavens! She's a, oh, a dog! Ruffarella is a dog! No wonder she had such an unusual singing voice! Catch her! exclaimed the people. Then Ruffarella took another flying leap, this time landing in Diamante's arms. Together they ran out of the palace and all the way home. Next morning, there was less mail than usual, but there was a package for Ruffarella. She was feeling miserable and didn't want to look at it. So, Diamante opened it and took out something hard, wrapped in tissue. There was a note with it, which read, Dear Ruffarella, Please do not worry about the unfortunate events at the ball. Sausages are hard to resist after all. A little piece of royal advice. One is often best off if one allows one to be oneself. By this I mean that while I make a reasonable job of being queen, I should make a pig's ear of being a pop star. Take care, dear queen. Wow, I've never received a letter from the queen before. Diamante unwrapped the item. It's a dog's bowl, she cried. Ruffarella was so pleased that a tear came to her eye. Cry. Use it? she asked. If it's all well, the same to you, I think I'll give up being a human and my singing career. It's just not for me. Oh, good, replied Diamante. I've really missed having you as my pet. Ruff smiled and said, No more Ruffarella. No more Ruffarella, agreed Diamante. How about a 
trip to the park to play catch? asked Diamante. Ruffy yelped in agreement. And off they went. Everything was back to normal. I just remembered I was still in my queen clothes. Just one second, let me change. Oh, that's better. You know, this story kind of reminds me about my own dog. Okay, this is Momo. This is my sister's dog, actually. I love her so much. Say hi, Momo. <laughs> okay, Momo, how would you like to be dressed up as a human? How would you like that? Should we be dressed up as a human? Should we try it? I don't know how much she's gonna like this. She has a little bow on her head now. What do you think? Hmm. Momo, what do you think? Hmm. I don't know if she likes it. <laughs> That's okay, Momo. Thank you. Well, Maybe not all dogs like to dress up as humans. Maybe we should just leave dogs alone. <laughs> I'm Momo. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. If you want to see more stories and more tales being told, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and put a like on there for me so you can see more of these wonderful stories. I can't wait to see you next time when it's time to tell a tale. Goodbye, everyone.